Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode one of Talking Facts. Today we are interviewing Jacoby Ford. I hope you guys enjoy. Make sure to leave a like and comment if you guys enjoyed this first episode. Hello. Hey. Hey, what's going on, man? How's it going? Good, good, you? I'm good. Yep, I got you. All right. So, first question, we'll just start with, uh, what's your earliest football memory? Earliest football memory. I'd probably say when I was in third grade, uh, the last play of the game, I had a pass thrown to me out wide, and boom, it hit my foot. And then we had one more play, and we did the exact same thing, same exact play, same pass. It was low. I caught it on the left side of the field, ran back to the right side of the field, made two people miss, and then cut back all the way back to the left side of the field and won the game on the very last play of the game. And it was just it's really just one of the <clears throat> best memories that I have. I just remember how much fun you know, it was doing that and just, you know, how much joy it had, but definitely my favorite youngest memory. When did you know you had a legitimate shot to play in the NFL? Um, I think I knew, um, you know, it, it was just, it was just really just, um, just the way I stood out um, to myself, you know, um, you know, it was just always, you know, I always knew that I was small. I wasn't the biggest guy. I wasn't the tallest guy but you know i knew that i was a lot faster than a lot of people but even though i was smaller than people i would i would play bigger than what i was so i always knew that that was my advantage you know even though i was smaller than people i would always play bigger than what i was and that's something that always just you know just kept in the back of my head you know just always just a little fire fire burning but um you know i just always had a, a good work work ethic and you know i just loved the game of football and you know i was just I wasn't going to settle for not making it to the NFL, honestly. You know, that was just my mentality, the way that I went into it. You know, because my brother, you know, I thought he was, and then, you know, I saw the path that he took, and it just kind of motivated me to definitely not go that route. So um, it was just unfortunate for him with injuries. Um, but, you know, I ended up making it, and, you know, I was living out a lifetime dream. 2005, you went from Palm Beach to Fork Union. What intentions did you have in joining the military? Uh, none at all. It was just literally prep school just to go um, get my SATs to match my GPA and then I was out of there. Um, I, I, was, I was there for six months so basically just a semester so I graduated high school and when I went enrolled there I was what you call a postgraduate and they have a postgraduate program as well as um, regular grade level uh, with middle school and high school as well um, but they also have a postgraduate program and um, you know you can go you go you go there, you play, you play football, you go to school, you march, you learn how to be a real disciplined man, and I'm, it was definitely a humbling and life-changing experience, and I'm very, very thankful and very glad that I did go, attend 14 Military Academy. So how'd that discipline help you uh, get to the NFL? Because um, it helped me because I, it definitely taught me, that you get, I mean, I've always respected my elders, uh, but the fact that you're a pretty much... You know, you're an you know, you're 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 a grown teenager. You're 17 years old, but you have to take orders from a 13 year old, all because of his rank is higher than yours. Or if you're too loud at the phone, and people are too loud at the phones, whenever everybody's out there on the phones, all they have to do is basically hit a light switch, and all the phones are cut off. So it just taught you to really, you know, you have to really come together and kind of just be as one. Because if you weren't, then it affected everybody. So that's one thing that it always taught. It was just not, like not one person is just going to suffer. Like you don't even have to be the one that's loud, but they'll cut the phones off in the middle of the conversation, and you can't even talk to your, your family, your loved one, uh, whoever you were communicating with. And there are no phone, no cell phones outside of just the regular phones that you can use. They lock them up in a in a in a little vault room that we have on each floor, and you get them whenever you like go away on vacation or if you go on official visits. But other than that, the only communication you have is, you know, writing letters. That was something I learned to do. I learned to write letters. That was a big thing with me. So I started writing a lot of letters. And, um, you know, it was just it was a great experience. You know, I still, and I'm still friends with a lot of those guys still to this day. So you got Clemson, Florida, Michigan State, Virginia, Virginia Tech, and West Virginia. What made Clemson stand out to you among these options? 
Um, just the atmosphere whenever I went there. Um, and my brother came came along too whenever I went on the visit. Uh, he met me and he met me because he lived in Atlanta, so it was a close drive for him. And you know, just when I got there, I just felt the family atmosphere and you know, just kind of what they were trying to build there. And I felt at home. I felt that it just felt comfortable and it felt right. And the whole situation, just you know, how it could play into my hands of you know being a student athlete there and being able to run to be able to play football and as well run track. You know, I met with both coaches as well, so uh, that was a great pitch for me. And um, you know, and I like that Paul. You know, and I had a great recruiting. I had a great recruiting coach, um, Coach Burton Barnes. You know, he built he built a great rapport with me from day one, and you know, I. I, I honestly, I had Clemson literally on, on the back burner. I just, I just had them there, but all because of Coach Burns, just always was. He always was there. He was always there. He was always in communication. So I just, I, they were my last visit. Other than that, I was gonna go to Southern Cal, if anything. So if I didn't take that visit to Clemson, I would have went. I would have went to Southern Cal. Uh, so you had Bowden as your head coach for three years, and then you had Sweeney your last year. Was it? No, we had um, no, we were. Coach Bowden was there. My two thousand six, two thousand seven. Then Dabo mm. took over. In, in and we took over. Yeah, and his first full year was two thousand nine as us. So yeah. Yeah. So how hard but, was that change? Did Sweeney change your system completely, or did he implement some of the others? I mean, honestly, it was no change with the receivers. It was just everybody just got a chance to see what kind of coach that we had and how great of a coach that he was. And then he didn't. He, he still hasn't changed anything he's done. He's still just stuck to the little things of, um, you know, just doing everything right, just making sure you take care of your job. And the fact that he's able to now take that coaching from a receiver room and put it onto a whole team, you know, now you just kind of see the atmosphere and the camaraderie that we had in our room. It's now – upon the whole entire team, the whole entire program. And that's something that, you know, it didn't change. The only thing that changed was just him have to, um, you know, we just, we just didn't have him as a coach. You know, that was the only thing I think that was hard because we had to, you know, get a whole different coach, you know, being coached by Dabo and then, you know, not having him as much, you know, it was, you know, it was, he, like, he, he always, he, lo- he loves his receivers. I'll tell you that, you know, any chance that he got a chance to, get over there and work out with us and um, run us through some individual or something like that. Uh, he was definitely all for it. But, you know, the transition was – I had a great relationship with Coach Bowden as well. So, I mean, that was tough to see him leave. And, I, you know, I wasn't extremely happy about that at all. But, you know, I understood the business of it. And, you know, I couldn't be happier for Dabo. You know, he's, he deserves it. And, you know, I couldn't be more happier for him. And, you know, always still in contact to, with him until this day. Which of your teammates at Clemson did you think would have the biggest impact in the NFL? Um, I, it's kind of hard to answer that one because I, I want everybody to do well. Um, you know, I want, I want everybody to, to go out there and, you know, represent Clemson, you know, the way it's supposed to be represented in the NFL. Um, so for me, I, I didn't have like a one person that I just picked to do well. I want everybody to do well, you know, cause it's, it's good whenever you see all your brothers doing well out there, um, and you run across them and like, you know, you just know that you have that that bond, that brotherhood that, you know, nobody else ever had because you guys actually went to college together. So to see them actually be in the NFL and be succeeding, um, it's no better feeling. You, you ran a 4.28 at the Combine. I've seen reports saying you ran a 4.126. How did you use the speed to gain advantages throughout the game? I um, just had to be able to play fast, you know, because I knew that, you know, people tried to get their hands on me. You know, that's their way of trying to slow me down. So I had to make sure I used my quickness, use my speed. And just make sure I can always stretch the field whenever, I, whenever, I, whenever they needed it to. All right, draft night. Take me through it. Did you know what teams had interest in you, and where did you think you'd end up? I had no idea at all. You know, I just only thing I was going off of was just you know prediction rounds. But as far as team wise, I I had no clue. <laughs> I had no clue at all. Not even a guess. Not even. I had no guess at all. I I literally was just laying in bed, and then the Raiders called me. That's literally how I was, how I was. So what was that was like, like uh, getting the call from the Raiders? Uh, it was great, you know. Uh, Tom Cable called me. I uh, said they're about to take me in the draft, and you know it was cool because I found out right like literally a couple seconds before my family they were in the living room, and then you know you see my name come around fourth round, pick one hundred eight, and um, 
you know, then they come in, I, then I hear their excitement and then they come in the room and, you know, after that celebration, you know, in my neighborhood. All right. So here's an obvious question about the Raiders. What was the fan base like there? Amazing. They travel well. They're loyal. They, they tell you like it is. You got that thick skin with them. I'll tell you that much. You got that thick skin. You know, they love their Raiders and, you know, if you're not playing well, they'll tell you. And they, they don't mind at all. They, they really don't, but they love their Raiders and they're loyal. And, I mean, I love the fan base still to this day. Still have tons of Raider fans. Do you have any stories about the fan base that, like, stuck out to you while you were playing? I think the craziest thing would always be whenever we played at San Diego, how much of a away but home game that would be for us. Like, even though we were away, we still would have more fans and in, in their stadium than they would. So I always thought that was, you know, something very different and unique because it's not really many places that that, that that happens. So did playing on the baseball field in Oakland affect your gameplay? I mean, the, yeah, the dirt is, yeah, it affects literally everything. Um, you know, just cutting on it because you don't practice on it until – you don't touch the turf until you actually see it on game day. So there's no way really to prepare for it. You just have to kind of learn to – you get used to it eventually, you know, and eventually you, you kind of just don't worry about it. But you try to run as little routes over there as possible or try to fall over there, honestly. So as you guys do get used to it, do you think it becomes an advantage for you guys over other teams? Yeah, it definitely does because, you know, you play there every, you play there all the time with it. So you kind of know, you know, how to kind of maneuver maneuver on it a little bit better than what somebody, somebody else would. So you kind of have to just learn to gauge your speed. And that's something you just kind of you have to figure out. Everybody's different. So when did it really hit you that you were playing in the NFL? When I scored my first touchdown. Yeah, take, me, I, take me through that. Uh, we were down 10-0 to Kansas City. And uh, we came out halftime. We, I, we literally had a tough we had a tough first half. Nothing was going right. It was rainy. And then we came out in the second half, and they kicked it to me, and I ended up running a kickoff back, and that just kind of sparked the whole, the whole, whole comeback for the rest of the game. And after that, it was you know a great game, and then it, we we just went into momentum after that because we had a bye right after that game. So that was a big momentum week six going into the bye for our for our um, organization. So, what are your thoughts about the Raiders moving to Vegas? Um, it's 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 sad to see, you know, Oakland is. Oh, oh, I, I feel for Oakland, and, you know, uh, I feel for them. But, you know, I understand that, like I said, it's a business, and, you know, change is needed sometimes. And, you know, if they feel like that's where the, the change needs to, to be in Vegas, then, um, then maybe that's just what, what they need, a fresh start. And, um, you know, I would definitely wish them definitely all the success. But you know, it was just sad to see them actually leave Oakland because now Oakland only has, you know, just the Oakland A's now. So, it's, it's just sad to see, you know. They definitely deserve more, but that's just my opinion. So, what was your favorite NFL memory? Just suiting up every Sunday. Just the fact that I had my jersey with the back of my name, with my name on the back of it, making plays, being able to have fun, have fans, meet a lot of people, go a lot of places, um, build some relationships that are going to last in a lifetime and you know it's just created just a like a great brotherhood that you you know you're in the biggest fraternity ever so it's just brought a lot of benefits and a lot of great things to me and my family so i couldn't ask for anything but so what what play was the most memorable to you Mm. it's tough what came to mind? Uh, a few of them, honestly. I don't really have just like one that <laughs> kind of just like sticks out like I, that one, but then it's this one and that's that one. But I mean, if I was to say, I'd probably say it's was, it was maybe my catch against Kansas City just because of the way I framed the ball um, at the end of the game to kind of ice it and then kick the field goal to win the game after that. I'd probably say that was one of the best plays I did. What teammate did you build the closest bond with? Uh, Darius Haywood Bay. Oh, yeah. Me and him got 
pretty close and I'm um, still close to this day. All right. So after your NFL career, you went to the CFL. What are the biggest differences from the CFL and the NFL? Uh, the field, the football, the whole running start. Um, and then having 13 people on the field as well. Or 12, I mean, I should say. So having that extra person. And then only three downs as well. So the game can be really quick or you can be right back out there really fast. Was that all hard to adapt to? I mean, you just, you just have to kind of gauge it because, you know, if you're really fast, you, you know, you can't just be going full speed the, the entire time. So it's just about just trying to figure out, you know, what speed to run at, when. and um, But, I mean, it, once I started figuring it out, uh, then I started doing really well. You know, it was just unfortunate that I ended up uh, pulling my hamstring in the preseason game. But, you know, just kind of how just kind of how it happens. And, but I was thankful for my time out there. Um, I don't know. That's all I have. Do you have any uh, fun NFL stories you'd like to share? Mm, nah, they can't go on record. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. All right. I appreciate you coming on, man. Nah, that's all good. Best 2020 to you. Yes, sir. I <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.